Shalom, everyone. I want to share something briefly with you. I've been having a lot of discussions with uh, rabbis and Jews and Christians and people that are not so observant. I want to ask you one thing. Do you think that God, the King of the universe, the Holy God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, do you consider him as schizophrenic? I certainly hope not, okay? Because all my faith is anchored in Hashem, in God, yes. There's only one God. You know, 2,000 years ago, there wasn't all just one God, you know. The world was heavy polytheistic. The Greco-Roman world during that time was heavy polytheistic. Heavy superstition, belief in multiple gods, tears of gods, deities, demigods. Um, you can read Greek mythology as good as, I, good as me and, and hear about those stories and everything else, what happened with that. But Judaism is known and was respected of many things, even though people blamed the Jews for every ill will in the world. They knew that the Jews were true to their God. And in those times that they were not true to their God, and God gave them the knowledge of the Torah, they were punished severely because knowledge, knowledge implies that you have to be have some level of self-discipline in order to implement that knowledge and pass it on to your children and be responsible. Because when you have the knowledge of God upon you, you have the repetition, the repetition of God's image upon you too. Consider that. I want to share a few things with you. Okay, one of the holy prayers, the very basic of every Jew, something that we're commanded by God to pass on to our children is our Shema. Uh, in Deuteronomy 6, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Okay, one is one, okay? Or Akkad, you know, Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Eloheinu. Adonai Akkad, that's a basic prayer that we are commended to say twice a day when we wake up and before we go to bed at night. And in Deuteronomy 6, it, it continues on, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your means. I think um, Jesus said that, right? And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. And you shall teach them to your sons and speak of them when you sit in the house and when you walk on the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. It's pretty, pretty comprehensive there, okay? So God is one. The Lord our God is one. We are to love the, our Lord our God who is one with our heart, soul, and mind, and strength, everything that makes us who we are, uniquely us. And we are to pass this knowledge on to our children that that our sons and daughters we say God is one 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 yes amazing and Psalm 62 it says only to God does my soul hope for silently from him is my salvation salvation incidentally in Hebrew is Yeshua we say it all the time in the synagogue uh, in Psalm 62, verse 3, it says, Only he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not falter greatly. Of course, this is King David, okay? King David was writing this. Uh, he also continued in verse 4, How long will you plan destruction uh, to man? You shall be murdered, all of you, as a leaning wall, a tottering fence. King David went through a lot of despair, didn't he? Only because of, the, of his loving kindness have I plotted to topple him the delight in, in lies and mouth. They, they bless and really curse forever. And then David wraps it up. He says, only to God should you hope, my soul, for my hope is from him. Only he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not falter. Yeah, I've said this before. King David had a massive insurrection in his kingdom. His sons actually tried to steal the throne away from Solomon, you know, Bathsheba and Solomon. And, and even one of uh, the King David's best friends, which was military commander, went over to the other side. So there was a lot of turmoil going on when King David talked about Boaz. 
I, I dwell in the valley of the shadow of death. You are with me. That's what he's talking about, okay? And that was the context of that, of that scripture. Moving on to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, a very messianic book there. Um, for I, in verse 3, it says, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Who is our Savior? God, the Holy One of Israel. Okay? I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior, in verse 11. Uh, did I hear this correctly? What does it say in verse 11, uh, chapter 43 in Isaiah? I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Um, was God mistaking? Was he not looking in the future? Was there a potential Savior coming around the corner? Uh, I don't know. Isaiah is the greatest of all prophets, by the way, next to Moses. In verse 15, he says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. No one speaks this way anymore, okay? When Isaiah was speaking this way, he's speaking on behalf of God, okay? And Zechariah chapter 14, it says, and the Lord shall become king of the earth, and on, and on that day shall the Lord be one, and his name one. This is also prophetic in scope, and messianic in scope too. So here's several passages, and I promise you folks, you can read your Old Testament if you're not a Jew. You can read it. I want you to count how many times you've, you read the phrase, the Lord is one. The Lord is one. And in Isaiah, it's heavy. It says, the Lord is the rock of my salvation. The Lord is my king. Um, throughout the Torah, it says, God does not share uh, his glory with anyone. That it's adultery to put anything against my face. Now, unless God was schizophrenic, in other words, he had a dual personality, had a uh, trinity of, of different personalities, three different personalities. There are people that have multiple personalities. <laughs> God is God because God is one. Okay, folks? Okay? And when God, God is not a man, it says that in Numbers. And it says clearly, if you want to know where your salvation comes from, it doesn't come from any man. Okay? Um, there's many, there's, there were hundreds of Jews in the past, in the last 2,000 years, Jesus was just one of them that said he was the Messiah. There were Christian Methodist preachers like Jim Jones said he was the Messiah. And then the, uh, the uh, Davidic cult, if you heard about that, the Davidian cult out in Waco, Texas. Yeah, some people still waiting for him to come back from the dead. There are many people said, I am the Messiah and I'm equal to God. Folks, listen. You can Google this. You can research this yourself. You can go to your public library and reach and research this. 325 years after, um, after the, the, the turn of the millennia, okay? So if you say 325 years after the death of Christ or uh, the common era, as it used to be said, 325 years a Roman emperor by the name of Constantine actually took 27 bishops to Nicaea. It's called the Council of Nicaea. It's well documented. It's actually part of the constitution of most Christian, uh, fundamental Christian uh, denomination. And essentially, by vote, Catholics voted on the deity of Jesus. <laughs> Folks, read your Old Testament as you call it Old Testament, there's nothing old about God's word because when you read it there, it said in Deuteronomy, it says very clearly, you are never to add or subtract anything to God's word for it is eternal. So if you please do not argue with the personality and the the um, the existence of, of, of God. I mean, God is very clear when he says, I am one. <laughs> you don't mess with the one, okay? You shall tremble and fear his holy name. If you, when you're praying, when you're praying, please, folks, focus on the God of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Focus on that God and focus. May God's glory shine through every prayer request you have. If you need a new job, say, God, may your glory be greater in this new job. If you want a child, 
Lord God, may your glory bring forth an, a child for me because my wife is barren or I cannot have a child. Let that be your focal point to bring glory to God. God is not our servant, folks. We are his servant. We are his bond servant. God is God. God has already judged and decided to bless everything else. It's up to us to keep his covenant, to follow the contract he has made for us through his prophet Mo Moses on Mount Sinai. If we choose to live in that covenantal contract relationship that actually began with Noah, and we talked about this, Noah had laws and everything else. If we choose to live in that area, God has to bless us. It's really that easy or that difficult. Folks, have a wonderful evening. Take care. Shalom Aleichem.